started pricing out all the different parts and pieces and everything I was going to need to put together a reverse osmosis system. Uh, and I found this one for $149. It has everything I need, including the filters. Um, I was going to spend probably more than that on you know, individual parts and pieces at the hardware stores, ordering filters and connectors and whatnot. But the nice thing about it is, is that I'm going to mount it to the rig. It's going to be, an, you know, it's a slow fill. It's not going to fill very quickly. So what I would do for something like this is probably fill it, and I, you know, let it begin filling yeah, an hour before I'm ready to start brewing. And then uh, the water is because water changes in the summer from the winter. There's more chlorine in the summer, more particulates in the summer. Um, it just changes too much. So around here especially, uh, I want to have the same water profile all the time. And then also I want to have a water profile that is, you know, based on the beer that I'm brewing. The water I have here is not good for Pilsners and it's expensive for me to buy uh, distilled or raw water and then haul it in here. Uh, so I'm just going to do it this way. Um, it's not for everybody, probably, but um, I did price things out individually and my price tag was above 150 so this was easier. The um, reverse osmosis system, it, um, it works well. It just works really slow. Um, apparently, um, besides the little tank, oh, by the way, I decided not to put it on the brew rig. It's in the bar, basement bar, underneath. And it's set up here. And um, what I'm going to do is fill carboys with it. I'll just run a hose down, down to the ground here. And I'll just run it in because once this uh, storage tank is empty, it produces an ounce a minute. That's it. <laughs> so to fill six gallons, it would take about 14 hours. I'll use that RO water for my brewing process moving forward. You can hear that. You heard that run. Here in my basement uh, bar, I have a pump up system. This tank here, this black tank, pumps up because my sewer line is above grade slightly. Um, so to have the wet bar down here, I had to uh, let's see if we get this out of the way. I had to do a few creative things, and uh, one of them was a pump up system and a little point of use water heater. The big to do with um, RO water is the brine runoff. And the brine runoff is going in the vent tube here. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to try to. There's no water running right now anywhere, but you may be able to hear water running. So if you can hear that, what's happening is the way this works is that you have a pre filter, you have the RO membrane, which um, is really the heart of the matter here, and then you have a um, high-density charcoal filter that takes out any of the uh, odors or impurities. So the RO filter is what's happening here is that the RO principle is basically that the water is running through the membrane in a sort of in a horizontal manner, and uh, what would happen is is that the brine of the uh, all the stuff that's being filtered out would would clog the filter quickly. So it's constantly dumping uh, the high pressure side uh, brine uh, as a and as a discharge. So to make our water, you're actually using almost twice as much water. So to make well, these start from zero and then build your water profile per style, um, this is probably the way to go. Um, if you're one of the lucky ones, like I used to be living in Maine where I had very pure water to begin with, or maybe like Tony or some other people that are fortunate, then you don't need to do this. But uh, probably like 13 gallons of RO water and uh, going to input them into the water calculator and my grains and <clears throat> add, the appropriate, add the appropriate amount of um, 
good morning. <laughs> uh, for the uh, beer that I'm brewing, I'm going to add the appropriate amount of um, Epsom salt and uh, calcium chloride. I, the output of that is uh, so slow that it didn't make sense to put it on the uh, brew rig. Um, to have a really, I guess, uh, high capacity RO water system, uh, it would be bigger than my brew rig. <laughs> So you learn things as you go, right? Some of you probably already knew this and went, oh, yeah, that's not going to work. But this does work, and I will collect the water this way because it's way cheaper and it's way easier uh, than having to go to the, the grocery and hauling all that water back. Okay, I'm going to get started on my brew day. Today it's a Raspberry Wheat clone of the UFO Raz. <laughs> There's my solution. Worked great. Post that recipe up. I did. Yeah, that's both on uh, Root Dirt and on Beer's Recipe. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Hey, I got your uh, I got your uh, pictures of the uh, the uh, Gordon Strong pages. Thanks. I got the pictures that you sent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So on the back, it's got the uh, calculations for working with the reverse osmosis, and I think it was just for the uh, for West Coast IPA. That's oh. The page. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Tony. First runnings on the. So this will be um, one of the entries in a local competition. Grain Bill, Black Betty is standing by. Double brew day. Fly sparging right now. Foam there. Our water was anticipated at being 8.8, .8 and it looks like we're there. Ah, balls. It's kind of hard to see, but. That's 13 on the bricks, pre-boil. Let's see if we can get in the light here the proper way. So it, it looks nice though, but it's cold as shit. Room with Tony. Do you hit your numbers, Tony? Oh, so, you can explain it. Yeah. Yeah. 